Let me introduce you guys to JP. Uh, yep. He has been my mentor at the Dutch Game Garden. He has Thank helped you. me out a lot and he really knows how to start a company. And he'll talk about it. I'll talk about what you can do now, today. Take it away. All right. Thanks. So, um, you guys, where are you guys? Are you all in school right now? Or who's in school right now? Let me put it that way. All right. Who's in the second year of school? Who's in the third? Who's about to be kicked out or leave? All right. So you guys are about to start. So we're going to talk about what you can do starting in your second year to prepare your company. Um, so who's ever heard of Don Daglo? Yeah. He's a designer of, uh, or one of the designers behind Never Winter Nights. Does that ring a bell? He's an old guy. He's even older than I am. And he said, he came to speak at HQU, and he said the main reason why I'm an entrepreneur is because it enables me to build the games that I want to make. And I think this is really what indie development is about today. Okay, just quickly for me, I used to teach at HQU, but before that I worked in the computer game industry. Um, and I'm involved in several educational and development roles. My background is industrial design. So I studied industrial design in Eindhoven and I learned 3D modeling. Before that, I tried to do a degree in, in engineering and I fell in love with math. And I actually tried to get a chair and other projects based on mathematical formulas. But the love of 3D is what got me into games. So afterwards, I got into the game industry and I built 3D graphics. Does anybody here recognize these? Anybody ever play Red Cat? Red Cat? Yes, okay. So I built those and I built levels. I worked on Knight Rider. Anybody here play Amsterdam? I used to build the levels underneath the train station. And Red Cat and I did level design for Knight Rider. Anybody ever play this game? It was not very good. Yes, I know. It's actually why I left the company. Well, not really, but it's the last game I worked on. Afterwards, I worked for a couple of mobile game studios. Anybody here play um, Phantom Overdrive 3D on Nokia? I know Rami played this game. Yes. <laughs> All right. And then I worked on My Horse and Me. Anybody know that game? Yes, awful. It's the awesomest game ever. Um, thank you. Then I joined the Dutch Game Garden, and this is an amazing place. It's uh, 45 companies, of which 12 are in incubation or startups, and it's a big fun place. Who's ever been there? Okay, great. Well, if you haven't, the 7th of May is a network lunch. Martina's gonna love me for this, but uh, just contact us and come and check it out. There's a lot of games, a lot of stuff going on. So, lots of companies, lots of fun. And there's a bunch of startups, people who started, and then there's a whole bunch of older and experienced companies. Some of the stories you've heard about are these. Ronimo Games, which is the first incubator I worked with, together with Mona Banda and Force Labs. And Vlambeer, of course. And Fingal, Game of Reus, and Not One Sleep. These are about to rocket. Is Eric Diepevein here? No, he's around, I know. Metrico, and the first time at GDC, and in fact, Catch Catch was not what they should have been, but it was really moving. There's a lot going on. Now, I've been working with these guys. They look like you. They're not much older than you. In fact, uh, Ronnie Mo started uh, working already as a company while they're in school. And today, I want to talk to you about what some of these companies did while they were still students to get themselves ready. So, these guys, of course, known from the the blob, by the way, which was their student product, and which with the money that they sold, they sold it to a big publisher, and the money they got, they used to fund their studio. Um, awesome Nuts doesn't need a whole lot of explanation. I think most of you know that anybody here play Awesome Nuts? Yeah? Frequently? Yeah? Awesome. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Um, Game Oven, Adrian, these guys from Fingal, this was their fourth year graduation project. Fingal was built while they were still in school. In fact, they met uh, while at school. And then Abbey Games, of course, Bus, where are you? There. Look how young they look. This is, this is them. And their game was actually funded by the IBG in Groningen. 
So just so you know, right? In Beheer Group, Stufi, pretty much. Anyway, let's keep that a secret. Um, great success, lots of fun. Of course, these two guys, I would say they're the Justin Biebers of the Dutch, no, the, of the game industry, but I'm not sure if Rami can hear that. Um, of course, they don't need much introduction. Um, a lot of fun. But what did these guys do while they were in school? Well, I've looked at this for a while. We've incubated 20 companies. I'm not supposed to call that incubation, but something like startup support. But we've had 20 companies over the years. Some went down, some broke. Um, but there's a few lessons that I've learned from watching them and my colleagues with working with them. And a whole bunch of things I'm going to be given to you. And if you have any more questions about it, you can come up to me afterwards. So build as many games as you can. Now, if you go to the HQU or the NHTV, you're already building as many games as you can. Anybody here from the NHTV? Yeah? And HQU? Wow. All right. If you don't go to a school where you have lots of projects, like for example, the universities don't tend to build a lot, they tend to they, they make you read a lot, right? And when you build games, you have to do it in your spare time or go to game jams. Whatever you do, just build a lot. The companies that come in our program, on average, have built seven games by, by the time they get to the Dutch Game Garden, which means that building games is not a huge secret anymore. So they're ready to actually start working as on, on building a company. And finish these games. Don't just make prototypes, finish them. And actually publish them. If you can, just get a developer account for iOS or Android or even uh, an online browser-based platform and get your game out. Just try it, just for once. If you graduate and you've done one of those actually on a platform, it'll teach you a lot and it will get you ready for a lot more things that you don't want to have to learn while you get out of school. You can learn them now. Metrics. Build in metrics. I remember Rami put a metric already in one of their first games as a student to kind of me measure user behavior, how many people played what, how many people did this, how many people did that. Build it in. And what I mean by metrics is that you know what people are doing, what your players are doing, how many times they punch left or right, how many times they get stuck, how many stop after three minutes, how many keep going. This is stuff you can start building into your game now because it will help you build your business. Make the best game possible, duh. It's important. Something about game feel. Anybody see the talk by Jan Willem? How many people have seen this? It's on the Indigo classes. It's the game guard, Dutch Game Garden channel on YouTube. You can find the talk. And also, he's got a, an executable file where you can actually add 30 iterations to a simple platformer and see what he means by game feel. And it's really good. So really check it out. It's, it's an awesome little demo. When we come to the Dutch Game Garden, we look at sort of three things that are important to uh, us when companies want to join our program. Um, one is, who are they in terms of skills? Second is, who are they in terms of personality? This is a personality model. There's many of them, but this is the one we use. It's called DISC, D-I-S-C. It's about dominant, inspirational, conscientious, and stable. It's a personality type. Doesn't mean you're a number. It just means that there's something you can say about who you are. And three is attitude. When we talk about the skills, I break it up in four major parts. This is no secret to you. Uh, programming would be tech. Arts is graphics, but also storytelling and music. Game design should be in the middle. Business administration is the big thing that you will, be, uh, will have to learn as an entrepreneur. Generally, I get these kinds of startups. In fact, 80% of the companies that come to our program, they kind of fit like this. At the HQU, this is kind of roughly what people are capable of doing in skills. If there's anybody who's really good in programming, which happens, and also at the HQU, they didn't learn it at, they didn't learn it at the HQU. They already knew how to do it. So generally, this is roughly what I get. Tech school, art bus, you guys were roughly in this area, right, when you came? I mean, some of you knew graphics, but startups from the University of Utrecht Informatica, this generally looks like this. All right, business school startup, not a good idea, because they don't know how to build anything. All right, so this is ideal, but it never happens. But this can, you can make it happen. So this is interesting, because you need to think about who am I going to build my team with based on skills, and which skills are we missing 
to operate right when we start. And it's helpful to look around, not just for people who you happen to know, but maybe consciously look for somebody. Now, there's a big thing about business people. Generally, when you have a creation school, a school of, the, like, uh, a school of the arts or a programming program, you generally don't know these business people are around. They generally don't go to this kind of a school. Unless you want to become that business person yourself. That's fine, too. But just make sure it's a conscious decision. So check this, this, this skill. This is kind of my career. I kind of got into through the arts design and I moved out and now I'm sort of on the outside, meaning I'm not in a production team anymore. I just work with startups. Attitude. What's really important is also attitude. There's a lot of people with great skills and with great personalities and talent. But what? They need to be passionate. They need to be team before ego. There's a lot of people who have ego before team and it becomes a problem. In fact, of the 20 startups that I've worked with, and we have for the last six years, 14 of those 20, they changed the founders group because they didn't get along, there was egos, there was all sorts of stuff. 14 out of 20. You can do better than that, so think about that. Also think about attitude, about attitude and about personality. Now the personality thing I didn't get into very deeply, but it has to do with do you have a balance in different types of persons, or are you all the same? Are you all sort of quiet and friendly? That's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But it may be hard for you to step outside and sell your game. On the other hand, if it's four really dominant people, then you might always be fighting. So you have to think about that stuff. And if you want to know more about it, read up on the DISC. D-I-S-C, it's four personality types. It's a really interesting model. But attitude as well. Who, is it egotistic? Are you, are, is it all egos or is it just people really passionate about games? A little bit of ego is not wrong, but as long as that is not the leading character trait of your, or, of your group. You need to be finishers. You need to be able to finish something. Starting something is way easier than finishing something. So really, and gunnen, which is a great Dutch word. Gunnen sounds really cool in the game industry. But gunnen means, am I really to also give away to receive? The indie scene today is all about gunnen. In our building and everybody outside, in terms of indie scene worldwide, is really not afraid to share information and help, which has made the scene of the indie scene so powerful. Um, so really, you need to be able to help others, because you will receive. And you need to be a survivor. You need to not give up. Because if you give up, you, you, if, you, if you easily give up, Maybe you should join the army for a few years first. Maybe not the Dutch army, but the American army or something, I don't know. But, you know, build character or do a sport and try to win. Expectations, talk about expectations. What do you expect from the company? Where do you want to be in five years? Don't avoid these questions, do them now. Do a business modeling check. This is a canvas, who's heard of the business model canvas? Very few. If you don't like writing business plans, I don't either. You should check this out. This, this canvas asks you all the right questions that you need to be able to answer about the business you're about to get into. And you don't have to wait till the fourth year of school. You can do this now. You can do this this afternoon. In fact, Matt will explain to you how it works. He knows it from front to back to, and bus also, because uh, anyway, I'm just giving you a So business model canvas, check it out. It's really, it's free. You can get it online. The book obviously is not free, but this model is very important. VOF, most of the indies that work in our company, they start as a VOF. Do people know what a VOF is? You've heard of a BV? That's basically a legal entity of business. BV is what most companies are, but a lot of small companies with little, little money and little revenues start as a VOF. The VOF contract is basically a contract between people working together. And that's what you have to have when you go to the KVK, the, the Chamber of Commerce, Kamer van Koophandel. You have to have some kind of document outlining your, uh, the way you're going to work together. Now, the important thing about this document, there's some standard documents online. They're from the Kamer van Koophandel. But in that document, there's nothing about intellectual property. Made it basically, if you've invented Mickey Mouse or a game about, I don't know, airplanes called Cool Airplanes, there's nothing in the document about what happens if one of you leaves, who owns it? 
if three of you have built cool airplanes as a concept, and after half a year, one of you gets into a fight with the others and just tired of it and leaves, you all three own it. That's tricky, but every, everybody who's worked on it owns it. So what happens to that one person that leaves? Now, in order to tackle that, because we've seen this go wrong six years long, we've added an addendum. And if you want to know about that, it's just a little extra added addendum, and it will help. It's something you need to talk through with your team. And it basically or really arranges what happens if one of you leaves. Because you know what? You don't always have to leave because you're having a fight. You can also leave because you decided, ah, oh, having my own company is not really what I want. I want to move on. There's lots of companies that change DNA who don't leave in a fight. But it's good to actually talk about what happens to the IP. If the two that want to keep going, if they don't really own the cool airplane IP, you're going to be in, the, in their way. So think about that. So if you want to know about this addendum, you, you can email us or you ask at the booth, and we'll help you uh, see it and read it. So the do-it-yourself PR machine. Today is really the time of do-it-yourself PR. There's lots of small companies today that are really able to reach the market. The biggest problem today is not building cool games. The biggest problem is being discovered worldwide. That's the biggest problem. Publishers used to do that for you, and some of them did that very well, and some of them really sucked at it. Today is really the time to do it yourself, especially if you have more time than money. If you have more money than time, then you have to maybe hire publishers or do other things. But if you have a lot of time if more, and, and then more than money, then this is the time to do it. So how do you do this? Just a few things that I've seen companies like Os like Ronimo or Flambe or everybody should do. Choose a platform. And first of all, this is assuming you have a good game. Choose a platform. Screenshots, movie clips, viral movies. Did you guys ever see the viral movies for Fingal? No? Does anybody know what Fingal is, actually? All right. There's great viral movies about boy meets girl because of Fingal, blah, blah, blah. They were made during the last year of school. They went viral on Facebook everywhere, and they actually helped sell the game. Did you realize that Game Oven, this is the game Fingal sold for many months in the top 10 iPad games in the US as well. So it's really helped. It's because of these movies. So if your game needs a movie or a trailer, which most of them do, it's really helpful. Websites, important. Have it up and running. You can do this while you're in school. No problem. You don't have to wait. Facebook page. And start listing your favorite journalists and all the sites that write about games. Games that you like and games that are going to be like the games you like and going to build. Make a list. Start now. And start building up a relationship. I think one of the powers in the companies in our, in our building is that they really have relationships with, with press, good relationships. And one article by a good journalist about your game may reach 200,000 people. If you, wanna, if you had to pay for that kind of coverage, it would be really expensive. But these journalists are your ticket to the market. Uh, create news. Um, some of our companies have this internal rule where they have to create news every month. They basically say, we have to create news every month. Doesn't matter what it's all about, just that we're our name and our company's in the news. Um, to give you an example, if um, basically, if, if you're planning to do a kind of game, but you haven't finished it, you can still write about it, and, and people will start picking up on it. If there's something big going on in the world, I don't know, like, um, yeah, maybe it's a bad scene where it's just talking about the cool planes um, something happens to a plane, not a negative thing, but a positive thing. Uh, tie in with your game to that news. Uh, let's say the PlayStation 4 comes out. Think of some reason to write about the PlayStation 4 related to your company. If you come into the news every month, people will start keeping hearing your name and your company. And there's ways of writing news. There's ways of, it doesn't have to be BS. It just has to be something that's tied to something that's relevant and make sure it is relevant information. But there's always something that is relevant about your company and about your game. Press kit. Anybody here about press kit? It's a tool Rami developed from Flambeer. It helps you kind of organize your press outings. And it's actually being used, I think, now by over half of the indies worldwide use it. And it's really helpful. In fact, some journalists prefer that you use it because it's a, it's a format that they're used to now. So I would check it out. It's really helpful. Um, 
so, you know, get journalists to play your game and get them to write about it. Actively generate news and create a with your audience on social media. Social media is really is your friend. So learn how to use it. Indie power. The indie scene is a powerful marketing PR tool in itself. It's a community. It's like a big family. If you're part of the family and you have a game that you're posting, all your indie friends worldwide will be sharing it on, on, on all sorts of blogs and everything. And it's a really powerful force of getting your game out. Um, really, is what is indie about? I just read this quote last night and I thought, what? what? Wrap it up? OK. See, my incubators are telling me to shut up now. Thank you. Friendship, really important, and you're not the only one out there. It really is important. Gun and power, believe you can do it. Okay, this is all preaching, I'm preaching. I believe it, believe it. Epicon, anybody going to Epicon? This is a little plug here. Plug Epicon, yes, you check it out. In Den Bosch, great event. This is an advertising moment. One more commercial moment. Ooh, it's cosplay, but it's way more. It's cool, it's games, it's ESL. I'm trying to speed up, bus. I know. Um, Check it out, there's an Indigo booth, 30,000 people. If you have a game that you want to show to 30,000 people, of which at least half are active, avid gamers, then come and talk to us because we can get you a stand there. Dutch Game Garden, we still have room, so if you're thinking about actually renting a space even now or when you graduated, come and talk to us. Uh, Hilversum, we just opened an office. See how fast I can do it, Bas? Yeah, I'm getting there. Um, Hilversum, hey Hilversum. HKU, HKU, spill games. And Dutch Game Garden. There is actually office space available now. So, ew, look at that, beautiful. It's almost finished. Remember? It's almost finished, right? So, here you go. It's in this building next to BNN. And if you want to do your project in your HQU and you're thinking of another space, maybe you should also come talk to us. Ooh, beautiful. 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 Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just being. Uh, and there we go. Rembert. Are you here? This is Rembert. So if you want to talk to Hilversum, it's that guy with the beard. Yeah? If you want to talk... <laughs> Matt? If you want to talk about startups, that's Matt. Come on, Matt. He's, he's amazing. He's lovely. He's from America. He really knows, see? And he can help you with all your questions and more. And he speaks fluently Dutch after a year and a half. Awesome. Then, Romar. We have a program this summer where you can do a week of game building together. You can almost play company. So we're going to put students together from different schools, including business schools. So come and check it out. Is the dates, are the dates known yet? Not yet, but it's going to be July, August. Check out for that time. And then believe you can do it. Today is the best time to start your own company. Thank you.